Great. You mentioned the Federalist Society because in order to understand um, the you know, conservative judges on the bench, you have to understand the Federalist Society, but also Leonard Leo. Talk about the two of them and the role they played in shaping the federal judiciary and the Supreme Court itself. Sure. I, I cannot overstate the effectiveness of Leonard Leo. Uh, the Federalist Society, for so our audience knows, it was founded in the early 1980s. Uh, Antonin Scalia, in fact, was a faculty advisor as he was a uh, professor at the University of Chicago. It was founded by three undergrad uh, people who'd been together as undergraduates at Yale. Uh, one stays at Yale for law school. The other two go to the University of Chicago. And, you know, Ronald Reagan has just won. So they're thinking we should have more of a voice on campus. And, you know, campuses were dominated by liberals at the time and arguably, you know, still are. And they they decided they wanted to continue this debating society that they had at Yale uh, back when they were undergrads. And so it started, Jonathan, as more of a forum for debate. At the very first Federalist Society meeting, Stephen Breyer was there, as was Robert Bork and uh, Antonin Scalia, who at the time, as I said, was just a law professor. But, but it grew in its force and impact and its networking effect when Leonard Leo came, comes on in the uh, early 90s. You know, it had been building over the years, just growing in strength and momentum. And uh, Leonard Leo comes on in about 1991. And he, as you can tell from the book, and as you know from so many stories about Leonard Leo, is just a superb networker and money maker. You know, he, um, I know the Post has done really good investigative pieces on him, as have others. And I spent a lot of time interviewing him for this book. And he, as a high schooler, his name was, you know, Mr. Moneybags, because he could raise dough. And he has raised a lot of dough for the Federalist Society and for other very conservative causes. So every Republican appointee sitting on that court right now was screened in one way or another by the Federalist Society, including John Roberts, who met with Leonard Leo. John Roberts probably would have been appointed without any kind of seal of approval from the Federalist Society, but maybe the others would not have been. 